Hello, and welcome to our beginner's series for V-Ray for Maya. In this video, we are going to take a look at the rendering process for animations. Take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description so you can explore the scene in your own time. Now let's get started. We're working with a simple scene. It's animated, featuring a beetle walking in the foreground before the camera focuses on the main object in the background. Everything is set and ready for rendering. Before we render our animation sequence, let's review some important settings. First, open the render settings under the common tab. Here you can set the image resolution, file format, and the location where we want the rendered files to be saved. For more on general render settings, refer to our video from this series about settings for still images. This video will primarily address settings and features related to animation. To render an animation sequence, we need to enable it. Within the animation rollout, there's a drop-down menu offering two modes, standard and specific frames. The standard mode allows users to set a basic frame range, while the specific frames mode allows the rendering of particular frames or multiple ranges. For example, you might render frames 1 to 10, and after that 25 to 30. In our scenario, we're rendering the entire sequence, so the standard mode is all we need. We could also use the render animation only in batch mode, which is helpful as it only renders the current frame in Maya and lets the whole animation run in batch. This method conserves system resources since batch mode doesn't require Maya to be running. At this point, the render layers window can be used to create and manage layers. These layers can be used to render different parts of the scene separately. For example, you might render the main character apart from the environment and composite them later. Or we can set up layers with just some utility AOVs like masks, UV world positions, and so on. Next, let's fine tune the image quality settings. Navigate to the V-Ray tab to explore the image sampler options. Two image samplers are available, progressive and bucket. Adjust the overall image quality by setting the mine and max subdivs and the noise threshold value. The progressive type can also be time limited, which is particularly useful for rendering preview animations, ensuring outputs within a specified time frame. Another handy feature for animation rendering is the resumable rendering option, located under the Common tab in the Image File Output Rollout. Resumable rendering can save your progress in case of interruptions, like power outages. When you resume rendering, it picks up from where it was interrupted, rather than starting from the beginning. When we use resumable rendering together with progressive image sampler type, it also allows us to iteratively add samples. That means you can render a sequence for one minute per frame, and if it gets approved, you can just add more samples to each frame afterwards instead of starting from scratch. Now, let's visit the GI tab to adjust global illumination. We can choose between a couple of engines for calculating the GI. If you stick with the default option Light Cache, there's a preset dropdown where you can toggle between still and animation. For animated sequences, the animation preset is recommended. While this preset provides a solid foundation, you can further refine the quality if needed. Lastly, add any required render elements in the Render Elements tab. If you wish to utilize the V-Ray Denoise for animations, it's best to switch the mode to only generate render elements. Then, use the standalone Denoise tool or the V-Ray Denoise plugin for Nuke to denoise the entire animated sequence. Now, we're ready to begin rendering. Each frame will render consecutively until the sequence is complete. I have sped up the process for the sake of saving time. However, rendering a single frame took approximately 14 minutes. With 250 frames, the total render time is around 60 hours. A great option is to use the Chaos Cloud service. Click on the Cloud button from the V-Ray shelf to submit the scene for cloud rendering. This will take us to the Submit Job page in our browser, where you can name the project, the job, and more. You can also specify a custom frame range, but by default, it'll use Maya's set range. A significant advantage of cloud rendering is its ability to render numerous frames simultaneously, drastically reducing the time compared to a single machine. Remarkably, our 250 frame animation was completed in under 30 minutes using the available machines. With the convenience of Chaos Cloud, you can even preview the animation directly on the Chaos Cloud page. However, if you prefer to view the animation locally and offline, you can use Chaos Player. This allows you to not only preview the animation in full quality, but also perform basic compositing and color correction for quick adjustments. 
This provides flexibility for making rapid changes and improvements to the animation. Be sure to check out the other videos in our Getting Started series. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you soon!